Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. Today we're going to be talking about a massive new gun control package out of the state of Texas. I mean, this gun control package is so bad that it even includes ammunition registration. So let's talk about these bills. SB 145, SB 911, SB 912, and SB 914. You're going to want to stick around for this one, so let's get to it. We're asking for common sense gun safety solutions so some snot-nosed kid can't go over to a gun shop buy two uh, pieces of ammunition, 900 rounds of ammunition, get some more online for a total of 1,600 rounds. Hey, just want to thank everybody very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Please check out the main sponsor of this channel, which is the USCCA. I'll have them linked down below. Today is the last day to sign up and for all levels, get the free tactical flashlight. Also for all levels, you're going to get this universal handgun cleaning kit right here. And if you sign up for Elite or Platinum, make sure that you remember during the month of February, you'll also get that pretty huge duffel bag, range bag, which I think is pretty cool. So again, check out that link down below. Let's get started. Now I wanna start off by saying these gun control bills in the state of Texas, almost guaranteed are a direct result of people migrating from blue states. Now we know that when people come from blue states, a lot of the time they're conservative. They understand that they're going to a state that might have a completely different culture than theirs, a way of life, a way of voting. I mean, they understand that they're going somewhere new and they don't want to disrupt that. However, on the other side of that token, there's a lot of people moving from blue states that created the problem that they're leaving from and they just move somewhere where they want to create the same problem all over again. And that's kind of what you have here in Texas, where you have different groups of cities that are starting to go from, you know, red to purple to blue. And then you start seeing stuff like this. It's a slow trickle, but it happens. Now, we'll talk about the ammunition registration here in just a second. But the first one I want to get to is uh, SB 145. SB 145 basically is raising the minimum age to get a firearm from 18 to 21. Now that's across the board. So it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a long gun or a shotgun or whatever, you have to be 21 in the state of Texas under this bill if you want to get yourself a firearm. Okay, so moving on to SB 914. Now, 914 basically would impose ID requirements for ammunition transactions. So that means when you went into a store, you'd have to show your ID and prove that you're over 18 years of age. Now, if the merchant doesn't require the ID or doesn't check the ID or maybe gets a fake ID and the transaction happens with somebody that is under 18, it would be a misdemeanor offense. And obviously there's a lot that goes on with that as well. So again, this one is about ID requirements for ammunition transactions. Okay, so on to SB 912. SB 912 is safe storage requirements. We've seen this across the country. This is one of the less favorite things to do. They like to tell you how to treat your property once you own it. So once you own it, you bring it home, they still want to dictate where you put it, how you keep it, and all of the elements surrounding that. So this would impose safe storage requirements for the state of Texas, basically forcing you to lock them up and uh, making access to them even more difficult, even though when it comes to a defensive situation, seconds absolutely count. Okay, so now let's go and talk about SB 911, which deals with the whole ammunition registration thing. So the author of this bill thinks that if you buy a certain amount of ammunition that he would consider to be bulk, that the state of Texas should know exactly who you are and what you got. So they want your personal identifying information, your name, address, all that stuff, right? Everything that you could find on your driver's license or ID. And they also want to know what you bought, how much of it you bought, what type it is, and so forth. They want all of that information to then go into a searchable database, i.e. a registry, and they want to have access to it. Now, I have a quote directly from the author of this bill, which you can find over at Bearing Arms, and this is a very eye-opening quote because he says here, We should know when a young kid goes off and buys a bunch of ammo. We should know the quantity of that ammo. We should know who the person is. When a kid buys over 900 rounds of ammunition, and then he buys another 1,600 rounds of ammunition online, somehow the significance of that moment should ring true in somebody's registry somewhere. Someone's database somewhere, law enforcement should say, we have to go talk to this young man quickly, end quote. 
Now, there's a couple things I want you to take away from that quote. Number one, they want to know who you are. They want to know what you have. They don't have a right to know your purchase or transaction history. That's none of their business. These are your own private transactions. Number two, checking on somebody, checking on somebody as, as if to be alarmed for making a completely legal transaction is right on the fringe of tyranny. You do not get to check on somebody or do an investigation on somebody because of some lawful act. There is no evidence of a crime being committed, so checking on somebody just because you don't like that they have something that you want to regulate is not an excuse at all. Now, the chance of these bills actually making it all the way through the process, going up to the governor's desk and being signed, are pretty much this, zero, right? As long as Abbott is governor, I don't see a single one of these bills actually making it through. But is that the point? No, it's not the point. The point is that we're seeing bills like this being introduced more and more frequently. They're, they're becoming more just commonplace, right? So while you still have that last line of defense, that buffer before things actually become law, it only takes one voting cycle to change all of that. And all of a sudden, the demographics change a little bit more, the voting population changes a little bit more, who's in office changes, and then bills like this, which you didn't pay attention to before, all of a sudden become reality. So it's really important to pay attention to who are these authors that are coming up with these things, who are the co-signers, the co-sponsors, and so forth, and make sure that, you know what, if they want to keep their job, they don't ever show their names on things like this again, or you just vote them out of office altogether, which is my preference, right? So even though we're making a video today about bills that don't really have a chance, it's just another example of what's happening in states like this. We need to make sure that we put a stop to it as fast as possible. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.